In the years following the Decatur field studies, Lazarsfeld concentrated on building the Bureau of Applied Social Research at Columbia. First of all, the Bureau was quite unique. It was a very busy place. I must say I didn't understand what a lot of what was going on. Um, and the women were doing all the interviewing and the coding and the card sorting and the card punching but not always the reports. Uh, and that was, I think, a bone of contention. Uh, he was critical of Columbia University for not supporting the Bureau more. Um, but he, he just accepted it as a fact of life that he would have to, have to raise money for this uh, empirical research. So therefore, it was sub subsidized and supported by market research. That is essential. And that's what he learned in Vienna, that he could actually subsidize social research um, but he's also a chaotic, I mean, great leader, but a terrible, a terrible administrator. Even as he cultivated new corporate clients and created new research initiatives, Lazarsfeld never gave up on the Decatur Project. So the Decatur study had always been kind of research by committee. Mills was in charge, but a lot of people had a hand in it. After Mills was fired by Lazarsfeld, that continued, and a number of people, uh, more than half of them women at the Bureau, had a hand in analyzing the data or continuing to analyze the data. None of it was to Lazarsfeld's satisfaction. He was a taskmaster in a number of ways. Elihu Katz comes on the scene. In a way, and this is something Elihu told me, um, I guess, later, or maybe at the time, that personal influence was a rescue job. I think he may have used that term yesterday. And part of the problem is that they couldn't find those people. The surveys were done in 1945, and it took a full decade for them to get go out into the field. Now, even for Columbia University, especially with all the resources they had in the Bureau, that is an long, long, long time, uh, long, long time. This study had been kicking around the Bureau for seven or eight years, having been concocted by Lazarsfeld in collaboration with C. Wright Mills. And Lazarsfeld fought with C. Wright Mills, they separated. But I was the graduate student and I did what I was told. And so I rewrote parts of this thing. I added some new data. And as a result of that, got interested in small groups. Why small groups? Because the argument is if interpersonal influence is relevant for the study of mass communication, that is to say, if Lazarsfeld had discovered more than that people who own radios have families, but that having families has some bearing on whether the radio will influence you. So Kat said, oh, I don't know how this happened. Why don't we read small group research for its possible value for this conceptualization of how mass communication and interpersonal relations uh, link up with each other? Over the years, the influence of personal influence has waxed and waned. The book still has its detractors, who maintain the study's emphasis on limited effects of the media has shifted our focus from critical questions, issues of media ownership, control, purpose, and ideology. And then personal influence came out, and to be quite honest about this, uh, we were a little aghast, and I would have to say slightly irritated by it. It's also been criticized, uh, criticized quite pointedly, and um, criticized for underestimating the power of the media, criticized for being wrong in some of its claims. Uh, I mean, of course, we're aware of the people's choice, mostly because we're interested in politics, as many people, but it was really touted and, and accepted and communicated as showing that mass media really had very little influence and it was largely a matter of personal influence. 
And uh, we reacted rather strongly against that. You know, we felt this was going on a wrong track. I mean, he was a finding. We don't, I don't mean to imply that we thought the finding was unimportant. But the finding had to be put into its proper context. One of the things that's so interesting, I think, about personal influence isn't necessarily the theory, but is the fact that Mills and Lazarsfeld and Katz and the Bureau and Columbia and Decatur, Illinois and True Stories magazine and the women of America in a very interesting time right at the end of World War II, all of those things come together. The book took 10 years to happen and I find that compelling. Intentionally or not, uh, that um, the publication of personal influence with the support that it got from the networks of which it was at the central core was really to set back the study of mass communication and to drive it out of sociology. For Katz, however, the story is still in the relationships people have with others and the mysteries of how information is transmitted by and within personal networks. Begun in 1945, the manuscript detailing the Decatur study lay unfinished for 10 years. In the end, it came to fruition due to the efforts of many people, including a Viennese emigre, a rising star in sociology, and a graduate student at Columbia University. Working separately during different periods of time, these three scholars produced Personal Influence, a seminal work about the communication of ideas. It remains today as a milestone in the study of forces that shape people's opinions. <laughs>